Okay, my, my understanding of what COP21 is, uh, it's a series of meetings in which uh, politicians get together to make a global agreement on limiting uh, greenhouse gas emissions. COP stands for the Conference of the Parties and it's the Conference of the Parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is the international agreement designed to um, get us towards emission cuts that stabilise climate. There, as suggested in the name, have been a number of these meetings uh, over the years and uh, there still isn't a global agreement on mitigating uh, and reducing emissions of greenhouse gases. So what's happened at the first 20 meetings? Not as much as we'd like, first of all. I mean, there was a lot of progress initially and the Kyoto Protocol came into effect. It was actually penned in 97, I think. It came into effect once enough of the uh, a fraction of the emitters were signed up. And that was when the Russians signed up, I think, in the sort of uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s. So it came into effect and the first round of emissions commitments, cut commissions, ran I think until 2012 and we're still waiting for the next set. So in a sense there was a, a lot of progress initially and a lot of promise and as the first the first um, phase of commitments has timed out we've had a bit of a delay now before making progress on the next set. What tends to happen is that there are massive documents all with square brackets around text which does not exist and the main purpose of the meeting as far as I could tell was to remove some of these square brackets so to get agreement um, across the, um, all the all the countries and it has to be agreement by all the countries this is, I think is perhaps the problem uh, with the whole process. I think because uh, there's um, there's reasons for the different parties to um, excuse themselves so the Americans always excuse themselves because the Chinese weren't coming on board you know the Canadians would were, were doing likewise um, even in Europe, there's always this thing about, well, how do you balance economic development with emissions cuts? You know, even with the UK, I mean, the UK, for example, we, we've taken the moral high ground, or tried to take the moral high ground on this, but we started the whole thing off, I mean, deliberately, but when we started our industrial revolution, we were the first emitters and we taught everyone else how to emit CO2. So it's actually quite hard for any one group to take a position that doesn't potentially disadvantage them. You know, we're talking about uh, potential economic uh, um, stakeholders, um, you know, pot potential economic implications of um, reducing emissions, switching to other forms of generating uh, electricity, uh, for example, and you know, many of the developing countries in the world uh, uh, are struggling to develop, let alone having to implement um, green technologies. I mean, the UK will fight for no, we're not going back to the beginning of time and working out emissions because it won't be good for them. And others might say, well, yeah, well, hold on a minute. You know, if you're in, if you're in China, you say, we've got a load more carbon to burn before we're anywhere near you guys. <laughs> so you can see how when you're in a negotiation, a negotiation is not about the truth, actually. It's just about what can be agreed that you can get stuck. You know, it's not, someone once said to me when I went, last went to a cop, this is not the time to introduce science. It's an interesting thing, but I sort of believe it. You know, when you're in a negotiation, say you're buying a T-shirt at a market store, you don't want someone to come in and say, oh, by the way, the real value of that T-shirt is three pounds when you just about to agree 450. You know what I mean? It's not in anyone's interest. So there is a, there is a, dangerous, there is a dangerous thing here about, um, about that boundary between science, which is about objective truth or tries to be, and politics, which is never like that. It's always about a negotiation at best. There's inertia, both in the climate system and in the uh, uh, political system. It takes time uh, for things to change. A crucial um, variable is the cumulative amount of emissions that um, are, have been emitted. So it's not the eventual level of warming that will be attained is proportional um, to the cumulative. So as we accumulate emissions, we are committing ourselves to a higher uh, uh, level of warming. So the, 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 the longer we put off making the decision and implementing something to limit greenhouse gases, the higher the level of warning, warming we're committed to. So COP21 uh, is, is being held up with, with more optimism than any COP since the, the Copenhagen meeting in 2009, where many climate scientists and those wanting action on climate change thought we might actually get a proper agreement and it didn't quite happen. So there is more hope this time around, but I think as, as the years have gone by and the cops have ticked by, we've also got kind of weary of this optimism, pessimism cycle. So 
you won't see the peaks of optimism that we saw in 2009, I don't think. People will be much more cynical about what will be achieved. I suppose the, the really positive thing is we're still talking, you know, the leaders still feel it's worth them going there. Um, they want to be seen to be acting on climate change. Obama recently with the Keystone Pipeline, you know, made a big and brave decision that's not going to be politically very comfortable for him. So there is um, a sense that a, a subset of world leaders want to really deal with this problem and leave it as a kind of, as a legacy for a few generations that they sorted it out. But it's tough. It's really tough to get agreement on these sort of things. The earth will warm by two to four degrees. We, we just can't nail it down any better than that. This, the science is fairly complicated. There are lots of things that happen to the carbon. So it's just a problem we have to live with, that we, we don't know whether it's two degrees or four degrees, or often to the future, whether it's four degrees or eight degrees. 